tribute to all Mustangs. The second one, a P-51, a C model. See how the difference, the first is a D, the second is a C. That particular airplane, courtesy of our friends at the Commemorative Air Force, the Red Tail Squad. You notice how that airplane is painted? It's painted in that configuration because it tells a story, a wonderful story, a story that is so near and dear to so many of us out here today. The story that we've all taken to heart and I want to tell it to you right now. You see, back during World War II, that little red tail Mustang with a 1,490 horsepower Rolls Royce Merlin engine, the Cadillac of the sky, was thought to be so advanced back then, it was thought to be just impossible for someone with a different color of skin to fly. I'm talking about the Tuskegee Airmen, the men went down there to Tuskegee Army Airfield and they proved that indeed a black man could fly. This tells that story. Quicksilver, if you'll notice it, has different markings than the red tail Mustang. And here he comes. From the left, Brad Lang. Brad Lang, remember that name. As Brad Lang turns to the left there, Red Tail Mustang, let me tell you, Brad is the son of a Tuskegee Airman. Isn't that amazing? Oh, shit. Brad flies that airplane today at air shows all across the country and helps tell that story because during the run up to World War II in the early 1940s, the U.S. Army Air Corps was under pressure to train black men to be pilots. But the brass, the brass, they weren't entirely on board. They didn't think they could do it. But at the direction of President Franklin Roosevelt, a flight training program was set up in Tuskegee, Alabama. The program was designed by the Army Air Corps to prove that black men could not fly. That's right. They just didn't think that they could do it. But they were wrong. <laughs> Boy, were they wrong. Black men could fly. They could fight. successful groups of pilots in World War II, and they are forever known as the Tuskegee Airmen. As Brad and Scooter continue to beat up the airfield just a little bit more out there in these two aircraft, I want to tell you about them, because in their own right, these airplanes, they might be all that's left someday. Scooter showing you a four-point hesitation roll. Defining that aileron roll into four unique little quadrants. A maneuver that every pilot had to master. Brad, bringing in the red tails. P-51 Charlie model now. Now this particular airplane comes with a movie. And I want to tell you, you need to come out and see the movie Rise Above because it tells the story of nearly a thousand black pilots who received flight training at the segregated base there in Tuskegee, Alabama. But over 14,000 blacks supported. They supported those 1,000 pilots. They had to learn how to take care of the airplanes. They had to learn how to be maintainers. We had a whole crew of Tuskegee Airmen, 450 fighter pilots. 445, I should say, fighter pilots and their crews operated as segregated combat units throughout North Africa and the Mediterranean and finally Europe. 66, 66 Tuskegee Airmen gave their lives and 32 were captured as prisoners of war. The Airmen were awarded over 850 medals, including the Presidential Unit Citation, the highest award that could be given to a military unit. Just remarkable. You can hear Scooter and Brad up there having fun this morning. But that story, the story of the Tuskegee Airmen, is one that ought to go home in all of your hearts today. Let me see a show of hands out here. How many of you have a veteran in your family who served back in World War II? Let's see a show of hands for the World War II vets. A lot of you have your hands up. Go home and learn their story. Will you do me that favor? Just go home and learn your own family story. Because just like the Tuskegee Airmen's story, every family's story is important. On this next pass, take a look at that airplane. Quicksilver, open up with all kinds of insignias. For the modelers out there, for the aviation buffs, they don't make a lot of sense. We will tell you that story later today. That airplane, flown as a living tribute. You know, when you go to the
museum and you see the lion in the cage, it doesn't do much. But when you go to the zoo and you hear it roar, it all makes sense. Listen now to Brad Leg and the Red Tails Mustang roar on past. And hopefully, into our hearts. What a story those two aircraft tell. Go see the movie, Rise Above. It is here. And it is on display back there, courtesy of our friends in the Commemorative Air Force. And it is something that you have to go see. It's located here on the field. Go find the Red Tails exhibit. Watch the movie. It is air conditioned, by the way. A good place to duck in out of the rain. But right now, turn your attention to the right. And let's watch now is... Watch now as the red tail sets up for his approach to landing. Quick silver on the rollout. He has a whole show coming up later today, so we're not going to tell you too much about Quicksilver, we'll save it for later, but just take a look. The stars and bars, the invasion stripes, the highly polished silver veil around the propeller is important to look at. When you look into that airplane's paint, believe it or not, the black, the black paint on that airplane has little metal flakes in it. Each tiny silver sparkle in the paint represents a veteran. It's a remarkable, remarkable story. Quicksilver Mustang. You'll have to check it out on the web. Scott does a great job. Now, Brad Lang rolling out in the Charlie model of the P-51C for the Red Tails. Well, I told you earlier that...